Hello, welcome to the USTI Utility Billing Cloud-Based Demonstration. Today we're going to look at utility billing. Um, I've already logged into the database. It's a secure login. You're able to access your billing data from any internet enabled device. So if you're on your iPad or computer at home, from any internet connection. So let's go ahead and take a look at the utility billing. The utility billing application allows you to bill for unlimited metered and non-metered services. Um, if you look at the toolbar, across the top, this is where you're going to maintain your customers, go through the billing process, maintain your deposits, um, maintain your meters, get your readings entered in, and we'll look at all this today. Um, we'll look at the different options for late charges, and we'll look at doing payments and adjustments, We'll also take a look at some of the reports, and at the very end, we'll look at some of the setup options. So let's take a look at where you would maintain information on your customers. In the database, you can look up the customer if you know the address, the phone, um, the address, the account number, the meter ID. Um, you can even quickly get a list of maybe everybody on a certain street or a range of block numbers. So if that's all I know, I'm going to hit search and it's going to bring up the customers that are on that uh, particular street. So let's take a look at this account right here. This is the dashboard that you're going to see. This is where you maintain information such as where's the service address, what services do they have, um, what cycle, what group are they in. We'll also look at other things like balances and being able to reprint bills. So the first thing I thought we would do is let's take a look at who we're sending the bill to. So I'm going to go down here, and this is the type of information you can keep on your customers. So you can have uh, different mailing addresses. You might have the customer or the occupant or the owner. You're going to also make decisions here on do they get a paper bill or an e-bill. Do they get copies of the delinquent notice? So you might have a situation where the renter gets the bill, but maybe the owner gets a copy of just the delinquent notice or maybe the bill and the notice. Later on in the demonstration, we'll take a look at how easy it is to have customers sign up to get their bill emailed versus mailed. So this is where you maintain who gets the bill, and you can easily track those different scenarios of occupants and owners and who gets copies. The next thing I thought we would look at is the metered services. With our solution, you can have unlimited metered services on this account. You might even have a situation where you have 10 different water meters. It might be a school. So let's take a look at the information that we track on the service. Um, you get to define the service. Um, is the service active or inactive? You can have different statuses. The meter ID, we'll look later on, but we keep a lot of good information on the meters that you're tracking. Um, the route, how many dials, so we know when this rolls over. The book and route is stored here. We do work with different handheld units or radio read options as well. You can also set up 10 user definable fields for this particular service. Um, I'm going to look at some of the reading information so you can track you know, the average daily consumption, you know, whether or not this meter is being changed out, some of the previous reads, just so you know the system does keep unlimited billing history and consumption and we'll take a look at that as well. Now in addition you can have unlimited non-meter charges and just to give you an idea um, it could be a flat dollar amount you might even have a non-meter charge something called a declining balance where you're actually billing let's say they owe you a thousand dollars you can bill twenty five dollars each month until you hit the thousand so we can track those sorts of charges as well um, you can have maybe sewer based on water we do summer sewer averages, but this is where you can set up the different rates. Once again, there's no limit to the number of metered and non-metered charges. Um, we can also track the turn on and turn off dates. Just so you know, all of the accounting, if you add our integrated general ledger, it's going to update that as well, and that's a cloud-based true fund accounting system. Now, other things you might want to track um, is which cycle. 
Uh, my guess is most of you bill everybody in the same group. This is a tr is a true cycle billing. So if you have customers that move in, you know, 10 days into the cycle or they move out 10 days early, it can actually prorate those non-meter charges. So it handles those mid-cycle move-ins and move-outs or even transfers. You can trans some, transfer somebody from Main Street to Elm Street. We're going to move the money and the deposit to the new address. Um, you can also set up different class codes. This is a code that you define and we're able to print reports based on different class codes. You can have different statuses. You might have a new customer. You might have somebody being finaled. Um, once again, we handle those move in and move outs. Um, you might have a customer that's inactive bill or inactive don't bill. We even have the ability to track a vacant customer and we can even run a report to see if there's been any consumption for those um, vacant statuses. So this is where you're maintaining who gets the bill. On this same screen you can also access their balance. So if you get a phone call you can very quickly see here's the balance and notice how it's going to age that balance. So you're going to know how delinquent that they are. Now, let's take a look at billing history. As I mentioned, the system keeps unlimited billing history. You can actually reprint any bill. So I haven't sent this guy a bill yet, but I could reprint any bill that I select. And you can have unlimited history. You can also keep track of actions. So for instance, um, you can add an action. An action can be a code that you define. It brings up today's date. You can also um, define these. We have uh, system generated actions. So you might have one, they give you a bad check, it automatically creates an action. Or they were disconnected, it automatically creates the action. Or maybe they're on your payment plan. So lots of ways to track detailed notes on that customer. In addition, you can also do attachments. So if I wanted to you know, look at the different attachments, and any electronic file can be attached. I can see here that I've actually displayed an application. So you could attach a picture, a letter they sent you, or a copy of anything can be attached really easily. And let's go here and we'll actually open that file. So, like I said, you can attach any documentation, and it's, it's going through and it's actually launching this um, application that I have attached. And here we go. So, like I said, any documentation can be attached. Now, other things that you can do. On the same screen, you might be maintaining information on deposits. We allow you to track unlimited deposits. So you might have a situation where, you know, you've got a deposit, you can add a new deposit very easily, you can refund deposits, but it's going to do all the accounting on the different deposits. We also have a tab here for other information. Um, you can have, as I mentioned, 10 user definable fields. You can also keep track of unlimited notes. And if you do put somebody on an extension, as long as they pay on time, they're not going to be penalized, but they will show up on your extension list. Here's some other things that you might want to do from this particular screen. One is um, I might want to get a listing of my accounts, and I've got different ways that I can sort this. I can sort it by class, by cycle, by status, and then I can, I've got different ways that I can actually sort that report. I can also get an account ledger. So for this one customer, I might want to see all the activity or all the transactions that's actually hit this particular customer. And all I do, I can do from, do, from date. If I leave it blank, it's going to bring up all the information on this particular customer. And so there you go. And like I said, I can email this or I can print it and hand it to the customer. Now other things, um, we can do an aging report. Um, it's going to default to 30, 60, 90, 120, but you can print that and you've got different ways. You can do it by a route, by, by a cycle. Um, you can decide do you want to include you know, just your active guys or inactive bill. So different ways to pull out this aging report. Now this is a really nice feature. Um, you might want to get a balance. And of course, any system can get you a balance today, but we give you the ability to not only 
print it for today, but we can do it for a specific date. And so this might be a balance, you know, six months ago. So I can go back to June 30th or December the 31st or whatever specific date and pull it out by, st by status. And I can do debit balances, credit balances, or um, pull it out for a class of customer. And I can also pull a list on who's, a who's inactive but they still have a balance. So those are certain things that you might want to run all from this one screen. Now, um, let's go to the billing process. We've got a very simple process. As I mentioned, this is a true cycle billing. So you're able to bill you know, all your customers at once, but you can also do finals every day if you want to. We also have a great feature that if you are selecting your group, we do have the ability, let's say there's two or three you need to pull out because you've got an issue, I can remove those customers and then move forward with the 99%. So I don't have to wait until everything's perfect. I can remove and then build that group and take care of the other guys later on. Now, once I do have my group, um, I'm going to calculate, it's going to print a billing register, and then we're going to print the bills. We do have a laser statement and a, la a laser postcard option. We also have the ability for any customers that have signed up to get their bill emailed. So it's going to know, don't print those bills, email them so that you're not having to print and do postage. We also have a third option. You might decide you want to outsource the printing of your bills. We do have an integrated solution so that you're able to track the whole process from that we received your bills, we printed your, mail, your bills, and we mailed them. So you've outsourced the entire process. And a lot of times, if you're not getting the best postage rate because you don't bill enough customers, it's going to cost you about the same because we aggregate all of our customers and we get the best rate so that we can pass that on to you. So right out of the box, you're saving per piece. So we do have that option too. Now, other reports you might want to run from this menu, um, you know, we've got consumption reports, we've got billing reports. As I mentioned, you can do... Um, billing for any point in time. You can say detailed or summary. I can even pull up maybe just a certain charge. I only want to see when I've billed water or maybe late charges. So depending on what I'm looking for, I can pull out just that information and it's going to subtotal rate within service. So once again, we've got this. If I ever need to reprint a bill, I can do that as well. Um, so those options are available. So those are all the different things. You're going to go right down the list. And on all of this, we do have help text that you can um, access, as any, access at any point if you have questions. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we do maintain deposits. So we've got journals that you can print um, for any point in time if you want to see in detail information you know on your deposits you can also um, see you know what's on hand what's been refunded so you're going to have a complete accounting of all those deposits I do have a, a register that you can run you know what did you refund this year or what's still outstanding so for any date range you can pull out these registers now other things you might do uh, maintaining your meters. One is you might change a meter. You might have a meter that goes bad right in the middle of a cycle. Once again, if I know a little bit of information, I can search um, or I can press enter and bring up all the information. But if I need to change out this old meter, I can go ahead and set the new meter. And later on when I do the reading this month, the system's going to add the consumption together. So we know there's consumption on both, so you're not going to have to remember to do that. It'll do it automatically. Other things you might do, um, we do have a meter readers list. A couple different ways you can print it. Do you want previous reads? Um, you can do it by book and route. However, we do have a lot of customers that they electronically, they upload and download readings to those units, so we can do that as well. If you do enter in readings, we've got a very fast um, method. You pick your route, you know, where you're starting from, and then you can enter those in in that sequence. And one thing that's really nice is that you can, um, you know, when you are entering in your readings, you know, if you do need to do a, um, 
a reading and you, all you have, you can just do an estimate. So you can very easily, you know, do an estimate. It bases it on all the history. So we've got that ability. Um, we do also have this edit report. You might want to run a report by vacant to see if there has been any consumption. So really easy to, to manage that process on what readings. I can do it by status and, and look at the consumption. But like I said, very simple and easy to get those readings entered in. We even have an option here. You can do a mass estimate. You know, you had an ice storm. You couldn't get out and read the meter, so I can do it for everybody. Now, kind of going on down the process, we do have the ability to process your late charges. You've defined the, what, you know, the percentage or the dollar amount, and so when you hit calculate, it's going to bring in anybody that is delinquent. You do have the option if you need to manage that group, but when you post, it's going to put the charge out there on the system. So it's a very simple process. If you do send out delinquent notices, we have the ability to do that, and you can even do it for a you know maybe the the cutoff is two dollars so if you don't want to send a notice if they only owe you two dollars so that process is automated as well if you actually do have disconnects we can automatically create the disconnect charge it will create the disconnect action all in one step so when you're looking up that customer you're going to know if they have been disconnected or poss possibly given you a bad check that's going to create an action to track that. So those are things um, that you might do um, under periodically under late charges. Let's take a look at how you get payments entered into the system. We have a lot of different ways to get payments into the system. One is, my guess is, you probably have a lot of customers that walk into your municipality and they want to pay their bill. Um, they can very easily walk in and, um, you know, maybe, you know, they walk in and they don't have their bill, you can look them up. And let's go ahead and bring in Jerry. And it's going to bring in the balance. Maybe Jerry has a question on, well, what makes up this $34? I can look at the distributions and see that it was, um, you know, all the different uh, billings, and it adds up to the $34. Um, Jerry agrees to pay that, so I can hit Save. Now, let's say at the same time, though, uh, Jerry wants to do something else. Maybe Jerry wants to get some trash bags. So all on the same transaction, um, it's going to do a running total, and you're able to receipt for everything once. Um, when you are ready to tender, um, you can mix and match. You might have check and cash on the same transaction, two checks and cash. So it will also make change, but it's going to print a receipt. And here's what's going to happen. You're going to handle the money once. It's going to update the billing software. And for the trash bags, if you use our general ledger, it creates a journal entry um, for the miscellaneous charges. And um, you handle the money once. So it is just like a cash register. So you know, you're going to balance a the drawer. There's reports you can print out. Other things you might want to do here as well. Um, you know, let's say the auditor wants to see every transaction you receipted at the counter for a certain point in time. We can do from date to date. It keeps unlimited history. Um, you can sort it by the receipt number, the receipt type, um, subsystem, which is going to group your utility payments together, um, you know, miscellaneous things. If you later add our other applications, it would group those together as well. You could even do it by the, the account number from the customer or the general ledger account number. So lots of ways you can um, run that report. And so I did it by receipt type. So it's going to group my check, cash, money order all together so that I've got that all together and sorted. So really nice and easy. Other things you might do. So you're going to have payments at the counter. Um, you're probably going to also have a lot of payments, a lot of checks in the mail. Um, you can batch in a group of payments. And so you can have, you know, different batches. You can have unlimited payments in the batch. And so you can very quickly, um, you know, add those new payments, you know, create a batch, and then post. So you might have, you know, 50 checks, and then you post. One thing I want to point out is if you do have customers that are being drafted, 
it will automatically um, create a batch of payments. So that's an option that we have that you can store their bank information and draft the payments as well. Um, we can also um, import payments from third-party applications like maybe a kiosk. Um, another option is you might have customers that may want to actually do payments on your website and use credit cards. I'm going to show you how that's going to work. Um, the first thing I thought I would do is, is show you how, um, let's pretend like I'm one of your customers and I actually just received an, an email from your city that I have a new utility bill. So I'm going to show you how you can look at your bill that was emailed and also pay that. So I'm going to go ahead and log in here. And so you're going to have a secure user ID and password. And because I've got bills that I can view in one place, I'm going to be able to see all of my accounts. So I might be um, somebody that has six different properties. I can see six individual accounts. For each property, I'm going to be able to see a year's worth of billing. So I can print that or I can just look at that bill. So here's the example. Um, instead of printing and mailing, when you hit post, all the emails go out automatically and now they're on this website so that you can view it. So this is what the bill looks like. Um, I can also pay that bill. And in this scenario, I'm able to use any credit card. Um, you're going to collect 100% of the amount due and the system calculates a convenience fee, which is 3% plus 35 cents. And I have to accept it. So they're going to accept the convenience fee. You're going to collect 100%. It's totally integrated, so you're not keying in the payments for the payments on the website. So you're able to say yes to credit cards, and the customers pay the convenience. We also have a model where the agency pays, but I would say most of our customers, 99%, have the customers pay the convenience. Now you might also have customers that don't sign up to get their bill emailed, but they still want to pay their bill on. They still want to pay it online. You can do that plus you can turn on buttons for other things you need to receipt in your community. So it doesn't have to be just our software. But if I was paying online, I would enter in my account number and let's say it's a $50 bill, it's going to calculate the convenience fee which is 3% plus 35 cents. But the best news is um, it's integrated. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to log back on to um, the database. And uh, we'll take a look at a few more options. As I mentioned, you're able to get to the database from any internet browser. You will have a user login that is that only you can access your information, so it is secure. And you're going to have, um, like I said, a password. But there's no special software required. You're able to get to your database from anywhere. And we'll go back to the utility billing. So, like I said, we've looked at where you maintain your customers, we've gone through the billing process, we've looked at deposits, we've looked at meters, we've looked at late charges. There's a few more payment options that I wanted to show you. Let's say you need to reverse a payment, and once again, you can look up that customer. So if you know just a little bit of information, and I'm going to select this customer, and now I can pick which payment do I want to reverse. And if this happens to be an NSF charge, I can also automatically create the, the action and charge them the NSF fee. So it walks you right through the process if that does happen. So easy to reverse it. And like I said, if you're using our integrated accounting, it's going to update the system as well. And it is a true fund accounting um, system. Now, you may also need to do an adjustment, so this is if you need to add a positive or negative adjustment, and you simply just add it onto the account, and then it's going to show up immediately on the account, the adjustment. Um, if you do need to write off balances, we have the ability to write off a group of balances, so you might have, um, you know, a certain date or a certain balance, and we can write off and retrieve those balances, so we have that ability as well. So once again, there's also some additional reporting. As I mentioned, the system does keep unlimited history. You can do mailing labels. 
Um, if you are um, billing that declining balance, you're going to know at any point how much is left to bill. But like I said before, there are lots of um, you know reports on consumption and payment history. It does keep unlimited history. The setup actually happens here, so it's very simple to set up. It's code driven. Um, just to show you an example, like when you're setting up your, your services and rates, you're going to have one simple screen where you can maintain all your different, uh, you know, different water accounts, different GL accounts, um, different late fees, different rates. So if I wanted to, let's say, modify this one, you know, you're going to have a rate table and how does it work, but it's all here together so you can define, you know, on the late charge, is it a percentage, is it a dollar amount, and all the accounting that goes behind all of that. And the same thing if it's subject to taxes. So we have a service called a Go Live that together with you we, we get all the tables set up and we train you on how to use it until you're live. So lots of good information. Um, I told you earlier we do keep a lot of really good information on your meters. Um, you know, there's user definable fields, you know, when did you purchase it, serial numbers, how many dials, and there's um, the user definable fields that you can track specific information, and then of course you can, you know, print information on your on your meters as well. So it does a real good job on the, the inventory of the meters. So that concludes our demonstration. If you have any questions, please let us know. Um, but like I said, um, we do have an integrated general ledger, accounts payable, uh, utility billing, and it is software as a service. So one low monthly fee, and it includes use of the software, storage, and support, and we're backing up your data. So it really takes the whole network out of the equation as long as you can get to an internet um, connection you're able to access your software and you don't have to worry about if my computer crashes so thank you again for your time